Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We welcome you to the Airwaves of Radio Islam International and we have a very, very special interview taking place now because we have a very, very special guest and that is Dr. Mads Gilbert. Doctor is a uh, qualified physician. Doctor has served for many, many, many years in the specific profession. Doctor is also very interestingly, beyond just being a doctor, he is an activist and he is a humanitarian. And that is the whole reason why he is here today, because of the wonderful, the excellent, uh, the outstanding work the doctor has done, especially as far as uh, the Palestinian cause is concerned, the people of Palestine is concerned, the hospitals based in Palestine is concerned. And specifically, we speak about the Al-Shifa Hospital, where Dr. Metz Gilbert has been a volunteer for many years, rendering service to the people of Palestine. And for that, we make dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants him the reward for that and uh, brings him closer to the fold of Islam and accepts the services that he has done. And all the doctors that are serving there under very, very, very difficult conditions, their, their own lives are at risk, yet they continue serving the people of Palestine. Dr. Metz Gilbert, assalamu alaikum. Welcome to Radio Islam. We're very, very honored and a great pleasure to have you with us. Alaikum salam and thank you for inviting me. Now we speak, right, you know, uh, we, we are over this past few days, we are what has been taking place at the Al-Shifa Hospital. Why this hospital in particular? Because um, the Israeli war machine always needs to try to win the struggle of the narrative. Mm. And that's what's really going on in this world today. It's, it's, the, it's the battle of the narrative. And Israel has for many years been successful in portraying themselves as a victim, a victim of the dangerous Arabs attacking mm. them. They painted that narrative all since before 48. And it's been all the time the right to protect yourself. Well, in fact, the narrative that should be told is the narrative about Israel being a, colon a colonizer, mm. an occupying power which is brutally occupying Palestine illegally mm. and uh, practicing the most uh, horrible form of apartheid against the Palestinian people. In that pro project they are having to, to expand Israel, they also need to, in my opinion, they need to erase everything that could be connected to Palestinian infrastructure, mm. universities, uh, schools, roads, hospitals, primary healthcare clinics. Mm -hmm. So there has been a systematic attack on healthcare as long as I've been working with the Palestinian healthcare since 1981, I've seen this in Beirut. And uh, now for the last four, five attacks on Gaza, they have been systematically attacking healthcare. Mm -hmm. So in order to explain to the world, why do we attack hospitals, which everyone would, would consider abhorrent, you know, horrible, mm -hmm. you know, you don't do that. Mm -hmm. You don't even need international law to understand that these buildings of, these temples of compassion and care mm -hmm. for those who need treatment to those who need protection mm -hmm. should not be attacked, should not be seen mm -hmm. as military targets, but they do it. So they need an excuse. They need to tell a lie. And I consider this story about Hamas uh, having their command center in Shifa. As long as they don't prove anything, I consider it a lie. And I heard this first time when I was in Shifa with my colleague, Dr. Eric Fosson, one of the many uh, emergency missions to Gaza. They said, and we even got a, a phone call from the Norwegian Minister of Foreign Affairs who said, guys, we have to get you out. You have to leave. You have to leave Shifa. And we said, why? We're in the middle of, of bombing and there's a huge demand. We work night and day with our colleagues in Gaza. And they said, because we have been informed by the Israeli government that they are going to bomb Shifa because it's a command center and you have to get out in order to save your life. Okay. So we sat down. We had a discussion. We're both fathers and grandfathers. And pretty, uh, you know, uh, experienced guys. So we said, okay. Either they're going to bomb it for some reason and they're going to kill everyone inside, we stay. We get mm. killed, fine. It's not fine to get killed, but this is a mission. This mm. is this is something we believe in and we are not leaving our friends. Number two, it's a threat to get us running. Mm. They will not bomb. They just want to stop our tongue and our eyes mm. from being mm. witnesses. Because during that attack, Operation Castled, 
they had not allowed any white journalists into Gaza. So we were actually the only one with blue eyes and blonde hair who could report and nobody believes the, the dirty Arabs, you know, because they're only telling the, the false news. Mm -hmm. So we came in the double position of being doctors and also being in a way the ones that the voices mm -hmm. that the West would listen to. So they want to get rid of us or number three, it's just an empty threat. And all these three reasons came out with we're stay. So we stayed and mm -hmm. they didn't bomb. And then came 2014, which was a a horrible attack. Mm, right. We were again in Shifa, and after one and a half week, phone call from the Norwegian Minister of Foreign Affairs, you have to get out. They have promised a lull in the bombing, the Israelis, and the UN head will, will come with a convoy with armed cars to Shifa. You go in the cars, you are driven to Eris, to the Israeli crossing point. Mm. We will meet you there, the embassy, and take you to Norway. And we just had the same discussion. And we said, who do you think we are? Do you think we are leaving our people here just for some cowardish threats from the Israelis? We don't go. Mm. And now bzz, we uh, go quickly to 2021 attack, same, same. And now 2023 attack. They repeat the same. They claim it's a command center. They have absolutely no proof. They have... They say the biggest intelligence in the world, they have mm -hmm. the US intelligence. And where are the proofs? There is nothing. Exactly. And now they've entered into it and they've found some X-ray machines and two computers, they say, are proofs of being command center. I mean, it's so stupid that the whole world is, is laughing. Mm -hmm. And by the way, they have X-rayed all Gaza. They know all the tunnels. Mm -hmm. There could be a tunnel on the Shifa, but a command center? I guess we would have seen some signs of it. Mm -hmm. Some high-ranking resistance personalities, we've never seen them. Maybe some armed soldiers, never seen it. Maybe, okay, Dr. Mas, you can take pictures, but please don't go there. Mm -hmm. Never heard it. I roam freely around all the hospital. 2014, we even stayed in the hospital and lived there because it was so dangerous to be mm -hmm. outside. My phone has never been controlled. My videos have never been controlled. I've talked to anyone. I opened any door I want to open. So... You know, to my experience, no, I haven't seen it. And uh, I ask Mr. Biden and Mr. Netanyahu show us the proofs. So that's one aspect. The other aspect is that what they need to prove is what this report shows. This is one of many reports from the UN because every time the Israelis attack occupied Palestine, they go after healthcare. And there are tons of reports, this one, is the Gaza Health Cluster meeting, 14th of November. What is today? 16th today? It's the 16th, yeah. Yeah, two days, two days ago. ago. Mm. Came out yesterday. WHO, the World Health Organization. Yeah. And if we look into this report, I'll show you what we're talking about. This is a graph showing health facilities functionality. And here you have Gaza and you have brown and black spots. And the uh, black spots are non-functioning hospitals and the brown spots are partially functioning hospitals. Sure. You can see the majority are black. Mm. If you follow this graph, it's day by day. How many hospitals are functioning and how many are not functioning? And you see it goes straight down yeah. to this end point. And what is that? It's nine functioning hospitals in Gaza and 27 non-functional. And even the mm. nine partially functioning are partially functioning. Mm -hmm. So this has been a systematic attack on the hospitals. Mm. And in addition, don't forget, they have smashed, um, I think it is 47 primary healthcare clinics, which are out of function. And people in, in, in a situation like in Gaza, they need primary healthcare exactly. for their diabetes, mm. diabetes, the stroke, mm. their renal failure, whatever. So that's, you know, one graph. The other graph, who is attacking and who is defending? Israel is the attacker, Palestinians are defending. Is it Shifa only? No. Look at this. These are the number of Israeli attacks on health capacities in the West Bank and in Gaza. So mm. during the last four, four week and a half, there has been 152 Israeli attacks on Palestinian healthcare in Gaza, occupied Palestine, and there has been 
158 attacks on Palestinian healthcare in the West Bank occupied Palestine. So what are we talking about? We're talking about systematic atta systematic attacks on healthcare for the occupied. And what is this? Twofold. Number one, they want to discourage the people from making resistance. And and the occupiers, they have all, always done that. Any any army general who knows his tactique book, they know that if the soldiers don't have healthcare, they will not fight. Exactly, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's why all armies have their own medical mm -hmm. army. Mm -hmm. They have medical hospitals, they have medevac helicopters, they have, you know, uh, medevac soldiers, uh, they have medics in the front line with all the equipment packed nicely so as to open their way, stop the bleeding, give some pain relief and get them safely to the field hospital. Mm -hmm. Without healthcare, you don't get people to risk their lives, okay? Mm -hmm. So this is a graph showing the Israeli attempts to undermine the spirit of resistance in the Palestinian people, number one. Number two, they don't want to see any Palestinian infrastructure. They hate Palestinian infrastructure because it is a sign that the occupied, the occupied are actually having their society intact. Mm -hmm. So why should an army in 2023 calling themselves the most moral army in the world, why should they bomb the Al-Azhar University in Gaza? Why should they bomb the Baptist hospital? Why should they bomb the mosques? Yeah. Why should they bomb the water pipelines and the schools? Why should they bomb the ambulances? And look here, they have in Gaza, they have destroyed 38 ambulances. Why? Because the ultimate ambition of the Israeli state and the government, the current fascist government, it is to finalize their occupation of Palestine. Their colonial project is to have Eretz Israel, which is the Zionist dream back from 19, uh, 1848, from Theodor Herzl. It is Eretz Israel from the river to the sea. And what stands in their way? The Palestinian people, Palestinian infrastructure, and Palestinian institutions. And one of the most well-organized institutions that the Palestinians have developed precisely the temples of knowledge, schools and universities, mm -hmm. and the temples of compassion and care, the hospital system and the primary healthcare system. They want to empty the hospitals mm -hmm. in Gaza in order to flatten them. I promise you, they're going to flatten them. Very, very sad and very, very shocking. Well, uh, thank you so much for that very uh, enlightening uh, talk of yours for the very enlightening points that you have made it very clear to us. We see what is currently happening. They are attacking the hospitals, but you've made it very clear to us why exactly they are doing this. Now, uh, you know, uh, Dr. Dr. Mads, beyond the physical injuries, how has the ongoing situation in Gaza affected the mental health of the population in Gaza? Of course, it's horrible. It's horrible. I mean, when you see your home being bombed, mm -hmm. when you see your neighbors getting killed, when your own family is getting killed, it's a trauma beyond belief. But there's another side to it. Because the West, the colonial West, they always want to portray the occupied people as weak, as stupid, as incompetent. Mm -hmm. And that's the foundation for the whole relief industry. You know, mm -hmm. oh, here comes the saviors, blue eyed, blonde doctors from Norway. We are going to help you and save you. So that's part of it. But the, the, the part about the Psych psychological trauma is an other aspect of this mm -hmm. orientalistic attitude to say that people don't manage. We need 5,000 psychologists to Gaza. No, you don't need that. What you need to do is to stop the bombing mm -hmm. and to keep mm -hmm. the families together. Because the most important surviving factor in Gaza, what is it? It is the family, the extended family. Mm -hmm. It is the faith. It's whatever, if it's Christian or, or Islam, it's the faith. And it is the overall big project of every Palestinian, mm. which is a free Palestine. Free Palestine. And uh, another third, fourth protecting factor is solidarity, not to mm. be alone. Mm. Somebody comes to your assistance, you know, mm. you're at home, you have some things happening to you, your, your child is falling down the stairways and she's bleeding and screaming and you're there alone and you can't even find your phone, your neighbor are coming. 
is coming. And then the other neighbor is coming and saying, mm -hmm. how can we help you? Solidarity. So I practice medical solidarity, which means I go there not to replace them, not to say you can't do it, but to say, you have my shoulder. Mm -hmm. I will stand shoulder to shoulder with you, brother, sister, I will support you. And I will be led by you. I'm not sitting in some hotel and coming with my my bright vest with my badges on and my flag for my organization. No, I go to see the Ministry of Health when I come and I say, where do you want me to work? I want to work in your system, under your leadership. I don't, I'm not Hamas. I don't support Hamas. I don't support Fatah. I don't support Jihad. I don't support PA. I don't support any fraction or political party in Palestine. Mm -hmm. I, along with the Norwegian Solidarity Movement for Palestine, we support the Palestinian people and their right to resist occupation as they see fit. If that is the Great March of Return, a pacifist um, demonstration of years which cost so many lives, if that is some silent hunger strike among the thousands of imprisoned illegally, the hostages of, of Israel, if that is by burning tires in the West Bank or using a slingshot of a stone, I don't care. They choose the weapons. Has to be within international regulations and humanitarian law and the Geneva Convention, of course. But I support the armed struggle because any occupied people has the right, according to international law, to resist occupation with arms, of course, within the Geneva Convention. So this double hip I, I, I don't know how to describe it, this totally uh, immoral double standards that the West is applying while they support the Ukrainian mm. resistance against the Russian occupation in eastern Ukraine, not only with, with, with lip service, but with tons of weapons, mm. billions of dollars, and within a week, sanctions implied on Russia. What is the support for the Palestinian struggle? Same, same. Exactly. Same, same. It's a long-lasting struggle against occupation, apartheid, racism, and brutal expansionism. Mm. They have the same right. So why this double standard? And why is the world accepting that they're killing 6,000 children in four and a half weeks? And one of the key answers to that question is racism. Mm. It's because the people of Palestine are brown and not white. It's because the kids in Gaza have brown eyes and not blue eyes. It's because their hair is dark and not blonde. I'm sorry to say it. It's a deep-rooted colonial racism that is deplorable. It's disgusting, but it's thriving and supported by the United States in 2023. We would never, and we, Europe, the United States, Canada, Australia, would never have accepted if an armed nation perpetrated attacks on some white nation and killed mm -hmm. 6,000 white children in four weeks. It is, I'm, I'm sorry to say, it's a disgusting fact and it's a disgusting unraveling of the well-thriving and still alive racism in Europe and in the United States. And when I saw the big demonstration the other day for Israel in, in Washington, where they mm. shouted no ceasefire, mm. I felt, you know, they are on a different planet, mm. these people. So uh, I think we need to, to make sure that we know the numbers and study the facts. And I, I'm a, I'm very much in favor of what I call evidence-based solidarity. Yeah, it's fine with slogans. We need that flags and singing and shouting, but we also need to know the facts because the facts are at the end of the day, the basis for our mm. opinions mm. and our positions. And it should be that. And this is not, you know, this is not a sort of a Muslim case. Mm -hmm. This is a global case for exactly. any human being, for mm -hmm. any human being who wants humanity and international law to prevail in this world. We need to stand up for Gaza and for Palestine now. If they win now, the Israelis and the Americans, we're entering a very, very dark part of human history, where again, 
power equals right, where again the colonial powers can occupy, can steal, can kill people in the global south. We cannot let that happen. And we cannot let this new type of fascism that we see in Italy, we see it in certain countries in, in EU, where you have a combination of toxic racism mm -hmm. and then add to that a massive weaponry like in Israel. It's bad news for everyone. Definitely. Definitely. Very, very true. Dr. Metz, uh, you know, final question before we let you go. <clears throat> in your opinion, what role should the international community play in ensuring the well-being of the people in Gaza from a medical standpoint? Can I return that question to you, brother, and say which international community? There is no international community anymore. Hmm. There is no international community. It's the global north with their massive power and money, mm. and it's the global south. This overriding unity mm. of an international, well-wanting, well-wishing, nice international community, forget it. They spoiled it. We could have reached it. We have carefully been stepping forward since 9-11, since whenever, to try to unify the north and the south, mm. to try to find reconciliation to f try to find respect and to try to combat racism mm. and colonial thinking. What Israel is doing now together with the United States is a massive setback mm. for that reconciliation process. I want to live in a world where your faith and my faith are equal. I want to live in a world where I can be a socialist and you can be a Muslim and still we can have a nice conversation. Mm. I want to live in a world where humans are protected and not seen, seen as consumables for the colonialists. I want to live in a world where my grandchildren, I have four, mm. can feel safe about travel wherever they want and feel that respect, humanity, international law is prevailing. Mm. This international community, of course, should have said immediately, not right now, but years ago to Israel, you have to control yourself. You cannot continue mm. with this massive expansion of your colonies in the West Bank. You cannot continue with apartheid in the West Bank and Gaza. You cannot continue to uh, harass and attack school children because they are Palestinian. We stop you. We hold you, we hold you accountable. Mm. We take you to the International Criminal Court. You have to obey. You have to, you have to take the consequences of your bombardment of Gaza and the healthcare in Gaza. That should have been done in 2006 and 9 and 12 and 14 and 21, but nobody stopped them. They were never held accountable. They've always been having this impunity shielded by the United States. And it's like a pit bull. If you don't control it, they, it will control you. You can't stop it because you need actually some sort of, of dis disciplinary uh, consequences. And that's why the the perpetrators of the war crimes in Rwanda mm. were taken to ICC. And that's why the perpetrators in Srebrenica mm. were taken to the International Criminal mm. Court. Why never Israel? Exactly. Why never Israel? Mm. Because their crimes have been tenfold, hundredfold mm. of what bad was done in Srebrenica. Mm. Because they enjoy this shield of protection from the United Nations, call, from the United States, called impunity. And during these last weeks, we have seen what good this international community can do. It was a massive vote in the UN General Assembly in favor of ceasefire and, and the lifting of the siege of Gaza. But they didn't care because a vote there is unbinding. Mm -hmm. Every time there has been an extraordinary meeting in the UN Security Council where the votes are binding, the other nations have come forward with uh, proposals to stop the bombing and end the siege. What's yeah. happening? The United yeah. States veto. They don't want ceasefire. Mm. Like the crowds were shouting with the Israeli flags, no ceasefire. What is this? You know? So this international community that we so much wanted after the Second World War, we wanted another world. We wanted rules and regulations. Here is the framework. If you have a conflict, if you fight someone, these are the rules. 
Don't attack women, don't attack children, don't attack hospitals and schools. These are protected, Fourth Geneva Convention. We want war criminals to be taken to court and held accountable and to sit and serve their sentence. You know who should have been in these jails in, in, in the International Criminal Court? Biden should have been there. Mm. Netanyahu should for sure have been there. Mm. This Gallant should have been there, the Minister of Defense, in, mm. the Minister of Attack, rather, in Israel. They should have all been there. They would be punished. What happens? They say, we don't care about the International Criminal Court. We do as we want. We are the bullies of the world. We are the pit bulls in the street. We have the bat. We hit you. If you even dare talk to us, we'll smash your mouth. Mm. We'll never, ever obey any international regulation because it is in contravention to our ultimate goal, which is to conquer, to rule, to expand. And it's all for the money. It's all for the money. The weapon industry, the military, industrial complex in the United States and in Israel and in Europe, they love wars. They love mm. when Israel attacks. They love it because they earn shitloads of profit mm. on the blood in the streets of Gaza, on the blood mm. in the hospitals of the wards in Gaza. We have to stand tall now. We have to step up every morning. You have to go to the mirror and ask yourself, what can I do for Palestine today? Mm. You can write a poem. You can write a song. You can organize an organ uh, a demonstration in your neighborhood. You can be a member of some of the brilliant organizations in South Africa. Mm. You can join the BDS movement. Mm. But do something before it is too late. We are the only ones who can stop this now. That's the international community you're talking about. The millions in the streets, the millions of good people, not having the power of sitting in a government or being the head of ICRC or blah, blah. But you can join in with other good people and you can say, we will never leave Palestine. We will never betray our brothers and sisters in Palestine. And we will do our share to be part of this deluge, this avalanche of solidarity that we see in the world today. People cut through the crap. People cut through the lies. Shifa, forget about it. Look what they're doing. Get knowledge, study, check the facts and oppose the Israeli machine of lying, the Hashbara. So the future is bright. Solidarity is our answer. Mm -hmm. And uh, as we say in, uh, in Norway these days, Kolona Gaza. We are all Gaza. Gaza hatta Nasser, Gaza will have victory. We are Gaza, from the river to the sea, Palestine exactly. will be free. Thank you, Dr. Metz Gilbert. Thank you so much for your time, availing your time, coming here to our studios here at Radio Islam and the wonderful, the very enlightening information that you have shared with us and our listeners. We really appreciate your time and uh, good luck to all the good work that you are doing. You continue on your great mission. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So for our listeners, Jazakallah for listening in. That was a very interesting interview. Very, very, very enlightening points from Dr. Metz Gilbert, a, a volunteer doctor that has served at the Al Shifa Hospital in Gaza for many, many years, and who has this Palestinian cause rooted very, very deeply in his heart. As we said, we are all Gaza. We fight for the truth. We fight for humanity. May Allah Subhanahu wa Taala make it a reality in our lives. Uh, from our side, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Call him a gasa.